Welcome back to Daytime Ottawa. As you know, uh, live theater, live music is back. And one of my favorite concert series my wife and I have been going for quite some time is uh, the 13 Strings Concert Series. They have a number, uh, another fabulous concert coming up on Friday. To tell us more about it, I am joined by Matthias Mauta. He is a conductor and a recorder sol soloist. Welcome to the show. Great to have you here, Matthias. Um, before we talk Thanks about, for the, me. it's a pleasure. Before we start talking about the the concert itself, uh, tell us a little bit about your musical journey and, and your background. Well, I'm a musician. What can I say? <laughs> the thing is, as a musician, you can be specialized in doing one thing. I'm, I have quite a wide, a wide range of activities. So I, I grew up as instrumentalist, as a recorder player, a violinist also. I'm also playing the Baroque flute. I'm a conductor. I'm a composer. I'm a arranger. I also organize many projects. So I keep myself busy. I can imagine. No kidding. Okay, now I feel like, what have I been doing with my time? Uh, Matthias, I, I'd like to talk a little bit about your role because I'm always fascinated in any concert I go to. And as I said, my wife and I have been to many 13 strings and other classical concerts. And uh, the one thing that stands out beyond the music is the conductor. And can you tell me a little bit more about, about that role of a, of a conductor, what your role is and, and what you enjoy about it? It's a very privileged position because it always feels like all the musical energies uh, converge to that point where you are standing. And I have to say for myself, it's always a big pleasure and a, an honor to uh, work with uh, great musicians like here with Certain Strings because there's so much that uh, can happen in a very short time. So we'll have, uh, we have an, um, a rather like eccentric program uh, for uh, the Good Friday concert with like it's it's um, high voltage uh, music that brings a lot of energy uh, to the space. All right. Well, now you've got me intrigued. You you said sort of ec eccentric. How, how would you describe the music? Well, who are some of the composers? Well, one composer that really stands out is Carl Philipp Emanuel Bach. So Bach's uh, Chase Bach's second son. He wrote uh, six experimental avant-garde symphonies uh, commissioned by. Um, uh, Baron in, in Vienna, and he sort of less, let his own imagination go freewheeling, uh, let just go uh, uh, roll out. And uh, as a result, we have like a highly um, music with lots of contrasts, uh, rather extreme approach of different characters that all follow up without a clear connection. It's, it's like what you call Sturm und Drang. So it's like flash and uh, flash of lightning and thunder all put together in one uh, piece. And we play two of these uh, symphonies in the concert. Very nice. Uh, what about your role? Are, are you conductor? Are you a recorder? What, what, do you, what is your role in the performance? So most of the time I will be uh, conducting. Uh, okay. so it's a, um, I will have a wonderful time, and I play one concerto, and uh, so it's a, a, a concerto per flautino de Antonio Vivaldi, uh, written for a rather small uh, recorder. And uh, Vivaldi, being a genius, he brings out the best. So it's highly virtuosic it's, uh, on, on the one hand. On the other hand, the slow movement is so beautiful. It has been incorporated a couple of times in movies because it has that soaring uh, quality, very melancholic, very beautiful. So um, if people want to come to a concert and cry, that would be one of the moments. <laughs> I love it. Matthias, uh, let's talk a little bit more about the recorder. It's often um, the instrument many of us are first introduced to, but there are, as you just said, there are many diff different types. What, what Was that sort of your introduction to music as far as instrument goes? And, and what do you love about that instrument? Uh, I was also in indeed introduced by uh, to music with a uh, recorder uh, in, in, in my hands. And um, what I love about the instrument, well, first of all, uh, the, the oldest instrument that was found uh, on the entire globe uh, actually was found very close to where I grew up in, in southern Germany. Like uh, you take the car an hour far, there is a cave, and they found a recorded type instrument that is as old as 34,000 years. Um, so, which brings up for me the idea that my family might go back way longer than I thought initially. Wow. Uh, but also, um, playing the recorder connects us with the origins of humanity, so to speak. So it's always, it's not just percussion instruments, it's also wind instruments like the recorder that, that we are always there. So that, that's one part. The other thing is it's a highly, um, it's a spectacular instrument. And so that concerto that I'm playing here, I mean, you really have to get your act together. It's a fantastic piece. Uh, also very expressive as instrument. Uh, right. And just the fact that people are associating it as uh, with 
being a, like a child's instrument, it only means their expectations are very low. And uh, it's sort of one of my life missions to raise those expectations because, yes, you can do a lot with the instrument if dealt with properly. Well, music education, music outreach, uh, outreach is another thing that's, that, that you're incredibly passionate about. I mean, I can just tell from, from the way that you're, you're describing the, the recorder. Talk about the importance of that. And, and have you seen a growth in an appreciation for classical music? Because I, I think some might say for a while, perhaps in particular here in North America, we lost some of that passion. Um, it's not so much the passion. It's I think uh, politicians that politicians that uh, take decisions based on the lack of experience. So people who have had the experience, like at school, who are in uh, that have a, a remarkable arts program, they just have a different kind of outlook uh, to life. Right. And uh, people who take decisions on uh, these programs, they should have been exposed to that uh, kind of um, uh, up upbringing. And that's, I think, the main problem that we do have. Uh, my own children, they both uh, went to schools where, uh, where they were exposed to music and theater and all kinds of arts forms. In, and it changes a lot. It's just the feeling of being cohesive as a group, to have the feeling that your own individual voice is amplified by uh, the group's experience. It, it's a fundamental experience as human being. And so there's a clearly a dear lack uh, of uh, social co uh, cohesion and that we are looking f uh, towards in the future because uh, we keep cutting those art programs at schools to start with. Right. It's, very sad, but yeah. there you go. No, I agree. I, I grew up a theater person. My school had a great theater program, and it, re it really changed my life, just as music changes people's life. Uh, I'm just going to remind everyone, 13 Strings Concert, Friday, April 7th, 7.30 p.m. You can go to the website for more information. And would you mind playing us out here, Mateus? There you go. It's an Irish budrome. All right.